Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. I wanted to dive into this subject of here's a whole list of conditions that are not required to have in service connection. And no, I'm not talking about presumptives. Presumptives eliminate that need for the nexus, and that's great. But I'm talking about a whole other set uh, within the claims kind of, we'll call it the claim sphere, right? A whole other set of, of claimable conditions that could warrant you substantial ratings and boost you up into the higher percentages. Remember that, you know, if you're moving from a 90% to 100%, that's around a $1,500 per month change. If you have a spouse, a dependent, you're well over $4,000 per month of additional money in your pocket, tax-free uh, benefit that you earned. Now, that's the subject I want to dive into, kind of, um, I guess just a conversation with you to let you know and wrap your head around how this works. With that, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. Every single minute watched helps get the channel uh, a bigger reach and get this information out to more of us that uh, that actually do need it. And uh, all the thumbs up, thank you so much. If you want to support the channel in other ways, consider being a member. You can do that. Go to the homepage. You'll see the tabs there with um, videos and shorts and lives and you'll see members and you can click on that and, and uh, join there. Thank you to all you members. I do my best to get back to you and acknowledge your comments. All right, so let's jump into this. The conditions that we're talking about are vast. There are bunches of conditions that you do not need any sort of service connection for that condition. What are they? I hope somebody knows. Secondary conditions. Secondary conditions, and I'm the reason why I'm talking about this is sometimes people wonder if you need to still have some sort of mention of it in some way during your time in service. No, you do not. So if you have a condition that is secondary to another condition, now here's a little kind of side note, either directly or because of medication you're taking. There's a whole host of different things, right? So medications may cause different organ damage or something like that. Well, now if you have that organ damage due to the medication you were taking for a service-connected condition, well, now you have a secondary condition for that organ damage. Uh, or it could be my bad right knee, my bad left knee, whatever it is, is causing me issues on the other side, right? So typically, if you have an issue on one side, it's going to result in you favoring the other side, which then has that higher potential of creating other damage. So with that, it's important to understand how to document your service-connected condition in relation to your newly secondary condition. So again, I'm gonna say this, you do not need anything in service regarding your secondary condition. That's why it's a secondary condition. If you did have some sort of mention in your records regarding that condition, well, then it's probably more like a service-connected direct condition versus the secondary. Now, it could be, I mean, it could be both, really. You could, you could have something that kind of started manifesting during your time in service. Then you could have had another service-connected condition that just doubled down on uh, on your uh, issues, aggravating it and even making it worse. And you could kind of run that either way. At the end of the day, percentages are percentages. It does not matter if it's called a secondary condition or if it's called a service-connected condition. Nobody cares. At the end of the day, they all stack up with the VA funny math, uh, which I'll tell you about here in a second. Um, to get you their, your overall rating. So real quick kind of segue into the VA funny math, then I'm gonna come back to how you want to document the secondary condition, right? You're not just gonna say, I have X because of this, please grant me. You saying it doesn't mean anything, so how can you document that? So let's jump into the funny math here real quick. VA funny math, um, I, I recently talked about this on uh, the CivDiv, or with the with clay from the CivDiv, not on the CivDiv, with clay from the CivDiv on our joint channel, Veterans Daily, and um, great 
great conversation with Clay uh, over there on this specific subject. So if you have not seen the video, uh, please check it out. We just posted it, I believe, Monday the 26th. So check it out. Uh, very solid information on this specific subject as well. Uh, so, and I'll try to remember to put a link in. Uh, if not, go to Veterans Daily, yesterday's video. All right, so VA Funny Math. If you have three 50% ratings, that in regular math equals 150%, right? So, but that's not how VA works. We all know that. How do they look at it? This is how they look at it. They take your highest rating first. In this case, they're all the same, so I can do the monkey math. So, they're all the same, but they take the highest rating first, okay? And then they go, okay, well, this rating for a 50% disability means that you're 50% bad. But guess what? That means you're still 50% good. They slide the 50% over there, they go over, they grab your next highest rating, in this case, again, 50%, and they go, okay, 50% of your 50% good is 25. 25 plus your 50 bad takes you to 75% bad, but guess what? You're still 25% good. So then they go to your next rating, in this case, another 50%, and they take 50% of the 25, which is 12.5, rounded to 13, really, and then that jumps over to your 75 and takes you to 88. So now you're an 88% rated veteran. What happens? They round you to 90, and now you're paid out at 90%. So when you say, any of us, say, I'm rated at X, 70%, 80%, 90%, 30%, whatever your rating is, it's usually not really your rating. It's just what it's rounded to. I mean, there are times where it's going to be, you know, the exact same just because of the way the math works. But most of the time, you're either above or below. In this example of 350s, you're 90% rated, but your real rating is 88. That's not a great place to be when you're trying to reach 100. You'd rather be you know, 94, because then you only have a little bit more to go. Uh, the closer you get to 100% rating, the harder it is to get there. Let me give you that example. So now you're at your 350s is 88% rating, and you go and you get service connected for uh, whatever, and migraines at 50%. So now you have another 50 Awesome. I mean, my goodness, 450s, well, that equals 200. I mean, for sure I got to be at, at uh, 100%. So you're at 88. Well, that means you're still 12% good. They're going to take 50% of your 12, which is 6. Add that to your 88. Takes you to 94. 94 is not 100. They're going to round you down to, to 90. You need another 10%. You would need, you know, maybe you never filed for uh, tinnitus, right? So now here you are uh, filing for tinnitus before they make it disappear practically and um, get your 10% and then that would bump you to 95 and then you'd be able to get to 100. So that's VA funny math for you quickly. All right, moving over to what you need to do to document your service-connected condition in relation to your uh, newly secondary condition, okay? Condition X, either because it directly caused the secondary or because of the medication caused the secondary, you want your doctor to annotate that somewhere, right? You want that in your medical records. Um, your hypertension, for example, has caused uh, hypertension headaches, uh, basically migraines from your hypertension. You want the doctor to, to acknowledge that and put that in your medical records. Ideally, if it were me, I would be asking my doctor for a little letter that just encapsulates that, stating that you know, you're the patient, you've been seen for your hypertension, whatever, uh, because of your hypertension, you've now developed migraines. Talk about the signs, symptoms, duration of your migraines as related to the schedule of ratings for migraines to make sure that you get your appropriate rating and just a little, you know, a couple small paragraphs in there on a letter from your doctor that basically ties the two together. Your hypertension has caused these migraines. This is how severe they are. Thank you very much. Call me if you have any questions. And then now you're able to submit that claim with the nexus shifted from time and service to the 
uh, service connected condition. So your secondary condition has to nexus, has to link to that service connected condition. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.